On October 19, 2017, scientists using the Pan-STARRS-1 telescope on the island of Maui didn't expect to find something important about the universe. On an otherwise normal night of stargazing, they suddenly saw the strangest comet ever seen. Its 87 kilometers per second high speed and highly irregular angle showed that it came from deep space. It was the first known interstellar object ever to enter our solar system. It looked like a cigar and was only 115 meters long and 19 meters wide, which is small for a comet. Most importantly, this comet, later named Oumuamua, Hawaiian for a messenger from afar arriving first, sped up during the last part of its transit, more than the sun's gravity could explain. Even scientists started to think that the object might be an alien spaceship that was moving faster as it sped around our solar system. Most people have stopped talking about ET since Oumuamua was found, but no one has explained how the object broke the rules of comet physics and sped up as it left our solar system. Now, finally, a new study in nature might have the answer, and it has everything to do with molecular hydrogen. When a comet goes through our solar system, it speeds up as it leaves. For one thing, as it goes around the far side of the sun, the sun's gravity gives it a kind of whiplash-like push. Also, dust on the comet's surface gives off gas when heated by the sun, creating a natural jet that gives the comet even more speed. But Oumuamua was too small to have any dust on its surface. This meant it didn't have the bright halo or coma surrounding most comets and making their tails. Jenny Bergner, a professor of chemistry at the University of California, Berkeley, and the lead author of the new study, says that when astronomers looked for signs of outgassing activity on Oumuamua, they didn't find any. Even though Oumuamua picked up some energy from the sun's pull, studies showed that this alone couldn't explain how much its speed increased. Oumuamua's very strong, non-gravitational acceleration was the most mysterious thing about it. Some call it the Yarkovsky effect, which happens when small objects like asteroids or tiny comets like Oumuamua take photons from the sun and send them back out in the form of a propelling plume, could be the answer. But this effect was also too small to explain how fast Oumuamua was moving. That left three possible answers. Transportation by nitrogen, carbon monoxide, or molecular hydrogen. Comets have all three of these gases, and all three are what are called hypervolatiles. They really want to be in the gas phase all the time, but they can sometimes be frozen. When Oumuamua was in deep space, temperatures dropped to as low as negative 269 degrees Celsius or negative 450 degrees Fahrenheit, which was cold enough to freeze the hypervolatile. In theory, as the comet got closer to the sun, the hypervolatiles could have warmed up and released gas in the form of plumes. This would have given Oumuamua the extra push it needed to explain why it was moving faster than it should on gravity alone. The same thing would happen on other comets, but they're too big to be influenced much by such a small push. If Oumuamua were a tiny comet, it would be a different story. During their work, scientists used computer models to figure out both the comet's general makeup and its budget of hypervolatiles, or how much carbon monoxide, nitrogen, and hydrogen would be there. They also used computer models to figure out how the change in temperature from the cold of deep space to the warmer temperatures of the inner solar system would affect the materials. Overall, they came to the conclusion that the amount of carbon monoxide and nitrogen on Oumuamua would be too low to explain why it was leaking gas and moving faster but hydrogen would be something else. Like most comets, Oumuamua has a lot of water. Before the comet came into the solar system, the water on it would freeze into ice in a state called amorphous because of how cold deep space is. Normal ice has a firm crystalline structure, but amorphous ice is porous and has holes in it. The ice would also change in a second way when it was exposed to deep space. Cosmic radiation would cause some of the hydrogen and the water molecules to break away. That hydrogen would gather in the holes of the flexible ice, like fuel in tiny fuel tanks. When Oumuamua moved into the inner solar system, it warmed up just enough for the ice to turn into crystals. This closed the gaps and forced the hydrogen out of the comet, which is what caused it to speed up. Scientists explain that when the water matrix has enough energy, it rearranges itself in a way that is more stable and compact. During the process, you lose those pores so the hydrogen can leave through the surface. So the question is answered, the problem is solved, and there are no strange spaceships in the mix.
When the National Science Foundation's Vera C. Rubin Observatory opens in Chile's Atacama Desert in 2025, scientists and other astronomers will be looking for similar small dark comets. Part of the observatory's job is looking for hydrogen gas from comets. Before 2017, scientists didn't even know that Oumuamua's kind of comet existed. Now the Rubin Observatory and the scientists who will use it will help us learn more about how they act, what they're made of, how many of them there are, and more. The main thing to take away is that Oumuamua fits the description of a standard interstellar comet that went through a lot of space changes. If there is one Oumuamua, there should be many more like it. At this point, you're probably questioning what Oumuamua is and its goal. It can't be an asteroid, as asteroids are mostly irregularly round in shape, and neither can it be a comet because comets have a tail of gases. So could it be any sign of alien life? Perhaps Oumuamua would not be the exact place to look for the answers. One example of this is the WOW signal received from space. The WOW signal was discovered on August 15, 1977 at the Big Ear Radio Observatory in Ohio during a regular search for signs of extraterrestrial intelligence. Jerry Eamon, who is a scientist, looked at the 72-second signal. He wrote WOW on the paper that was used to print the signal. Since then, the signal has been talked about a lot. Some people say the signal came from an alien life form, while others say it came from a star. Even though many people have tried to figure out what caused the signal, no one has been able to agree on an answer. More recently, we've also noticed the FRBs. FRBs, which are also called fast radio bursts, are short, quick bursts of radio waves that come from space. They only last a few milliseconds. Our radio telescopes found the first one in 2007. Since then, experts have been working hard to figure out what caused them to happen. These FRBs seem to be coming from outside the Milky Way, often from millions of light years away. Possible reasons for these radio bursts range from black holes colliding to messages from other worlds. Another perfect speculation for alien life would be the meteorite ALH 84001. This rock was found in 1984. Scientists think it was blasted off the surface of Mars by an impact. Before it crashed on Earth, it had been floating around the solar system for about 15 million years. When the rock was carefully looked at, scientists found organic molecules and tiny bits of the material magnetite, which is sometimes found in bacteria on Earth. NASA researchers also said that they saw signs of nanobacteria when they looked at things through an electron microscope. Some people think that bacteria from Earth could have gotten on the rock, while others think that the bacteria must have been on the rock before it was blasted off the surface of Mars. With all these, maybe we would be accurate to say that it would be absurd to think that we are alone in the universe. And if that's true, it would be equally exciting as it would be scary.